Hi everyone and welcome to today's Biology Daily Booster. This is number 20 and the final one in our Paper 2 series. It is still on the advanced information topic list for both Foundation Biology and Higher Biology. What we're going to finish off with then is looking at some of these kind of modern techniques that we can use in medicine. So to start off with, transplants, something that hopefully we are at least vaguely familiar with. In terms of organ transplants, then it's not just a case of someone needs an organ, there's someone that's got one spare, let's take it and away we go. We've got to match those organs to the recipient, otherwise the body is going to reject it. It will recognise that organ as foreign tissue and the immune system is then going to basically attack it and destroy it. Kind of a waste of an organ. So to reduce the risk of that organ being rejected, we carry out a process called tissue matching first of all, and that makes sure that the donor organ is a similar tissue type to the recipient, so it minimises the risk of the immune system recognising it as foreign. And we use these drugs called immunosuppressants, which reduce the effectiveness of the immune system. One of the newer areas of research, if you like, are using stem cells. From our first paper, hopefully you remember stem cells are unspecialized cells, and we usually take these from embryos. We tend to use the embryonic stem cells rather than adult stem cells because they can differentiate into any cell type. Main source of these is fertility treatments because there's usually a few spares kicking around so you can actually opt to donate them to stem cell research at the end of the day. In terms of what we use stem cells for, well, first we can test new drugs for safety and effectiveness, so that avoids having to use animals or humans at that point. We can test it on human cells, see what effect it has. And secondly, we can actually use it to reverse damage caused by certain diseases. So we can develop new brain cells for those suffering with Parkinson's disease. We can grow replacement heart valves, for example. It's not all wonderful, though. There are some concerns. In terms of possible long-term effects, there may be an increased cancer risk. We're introducing cells that are designed to literally divide. So we don't know if there's a longer-term issue with people who've had stem cell treatments potentially going on to be at greater risk of cancer. Still a bit uncertain there. And there's always the risk of rejection of foreign material in the body. Our third modern technique is gene therapy. Now, gene therapy, quite simply, is where we're going to try to replace a faulty allele with a fully functioning one of that same gene. And the best example here is in cystic fibrosis. Now, cystic fibrosis is caused by one faulty gene, the CFTR gene. And what we do is we replace it with a normal allele of the CFTR. So what we do in order to get this normal allele is we use a restriction enzyme to cut that normal version from the DNA of a healthy person. We then produce many copies of it. You don't need to know the process by which we do that. And then we would insert those copies into the person of the cystic fibrosis sufferer just by using something like a virus as the vector to carry the allele. Now, we do have some problems with this. It's not a perfect way to do this because first of all, those healthy alleles may not get into every target cell. So they may not get into the cells we intended it to. Those healthy alleles may just decide to join the chromosomes in a completely random location and therefore they won't work as intended. And it's only going to be effective as a treatment for as long as those cells are in existence. And if we're thinking about your respiratory system, those cells are replaced really quite frequently. So that means we have to repeat the treatment time and time again. What we can do is, as a result of the success of the Human Genome Project, where we sequence the entire human genome, we can now locate genes that can be linked to specific inherited diseases. If we know where those diseases are in terms of their genes, we can hopefully develop methods to treat it. 
We can also develop drugs that directly target those disease-causing genes or their proteins as a result of that enhanced understanding. If we know where those genes are, as we said, we can develop new gene therapy treatments and something that's relatively new, personalized medicines. So what we can do is develop medications that have greater success rates and fewer side effects based on your individual genome. So by looking at it, we know what sort of drugs work well with people with that combination of alleles. And then we can give you medicines that are going to be more effective than just the lottery of we don't really know, but we'll give this one a try. And that is it. We have finished the entirety of biology. We are going to be doing a live stream, which will be tomorrow. And just because I've got a meeting until six, it won't start until 6.30. So on the channel, 6.30 p.m., we will go through everything that could come up on paper two. This one does usually go a little bit longer, so it's probably going to be about an hour and three quarters. But starting at 6.30, I hope to see as many of you there as we can get on so we can really focus on getting this last biology paper maximum marks.